Now I see a man sitting there selling vegetables, who is shining? Mm. He just looks at me, our eyes lock, lock up with each other, then he bursts out laughing and I also laugh <laughs> <laughs> Then he's telling me his story. This is one thing that human beings have not come to terms with. If you become conscious of this, all the tremendous possibilities of being alive will become yours. Namaste World Raisers, Sabina and Roger here. Let's watch Sadhguru means an enlightened vegetable vendor. Yeah, this was a request through Facebook. Somebody sent us a big long list of really excellent Sadhguru videos. So thank you so much for yeah, the request. And the topic of this video, so an enlightened vegetable vendor. I can't wait to see what this is about <laughs> because supposedly the enlightened are among us. <laughs> so let's find out what it's all about. You are called a human being. I want you to get the meaning of this. Human being means not that you know how to run, not that you know how to jump, not that you know how to do circus in life, you know how to be. Ah, human being means you know how to be. That's one thing you don't know unfortunately right now. Now if you have to be, we have to come down to a few fundamentals. Are you mortal or immortal? No, 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 look at it and tell me. Are you mortal or immortal? Genuinely tell me. Hmm? Oh, that means you're saying you'll die one day. It's okay? It's okay you will die one day? I'll bless you with a long life. But you will die anyway with the blessing. Because this is the nature of life, it has to die, isn't it? And how glad I am that you will die. Because if you lived forever, uh, yeah. it would be a lot of trouble, isn't it? Mm -hmm. With a brief amount of time, what a mess we're making. Suppose you would not die, oof, total mess, isn't it? <laughs> no. It's good to die. Hello? Is it good to die? Yes. At an appropriate time, not today. At an appropriate time, is it good for all of us to die? I want you to understand this. This is one thing that human beings have not come to terms with. If they just learn to handle their mortality gracefully, life opens up in tremendous ways. Right now, ah, yes Sadhguru, but my horoscope says I will live till ninety. <laughs> your horoscope may say whatever, even the man who wrote your horoscope could have died before his horoscope said so. <laughs> horoscope <laughs> The only reason, the only reason you behave reasonably sensibly is because you are mortal. Yes or no? If you are immortal, what all you would do? Oh my God! <laughs> When you're driving in Kolkata, there are some immortal people crossing the street. <laughs> You've seen them, right? Immortal they are. If an automobile touches them, there is an enormous amount of pain involved and there could be death. In spite of that, many people are going about the way they're going. Just imagine if you made that person immortal, the level of atrocity that would happen in this world. So the only reason why a lot of people are re behaving reasonably sensibly is because of mortality. Have you seen some friend or maybe it's just you going on totally wantonly, suddenly your doctor told you, your, it looks like your kidney or your heart going down, maybe you have… if you don't correct this, uh, maybe in six months you will die. 
Suddenly did you see how disciplined they became? They got up in the morning, did their yoga, <laughs> ate right, did everything right. Have you seen these people? Entire life transformed. Simply because they were reminded of mortality. I must tell you, this happened many years ago. I'm in Bangalore city. I like to go to vegeta vegetable markets. If I'm driving across somewhere, I see a vegetable shandy going on a weekly shandy. I will stop and I will walk through, I will bargain everything <laughs> from chicken to eggs to vegetables to that crazy root which will make you invisible, uh, everything. I just like to interact. Anyway, I'm not going to buy vegetables or chicken. I bargain with all of them, then give them some money and go away because for the time that I took, <laughs> simply bargaining, not buying anything because I have no place to buy and take it <laughs> So like this, one day I'm in the vegetable market in Bangalore city. <laughs> then I see a man sitting there selling vegetables, who is shining. I just look at him, my God, what the hell is he doing in the vegetable market? <laughs> he just looks at me, our eyes lock, lock up with each other, then he bursts out laughing and I also laugh. <laughs> then I walk up to him and say, what the hell are you doing here? And he said, come, come. He opened up his little vegetable shop and asked me to sit down. So both of us sat in the shop. <laughs> then he's telling me his story. He was doing his normal life, wife and two, three children and whatever. One day he fell ill, then so ill that they admitted him into a government hospital, a general ward. They put him there. Every day they thought he will die, but he did not die. Every day they thought he will die, he did not die. Two, three months went on, then there was no space, so they put him in the corridor outside because this guy doesn't live, doesn't die. <laughs> so after about three months, his wife stopped coming, she lost her patience. How long to come and sit with him, this fellow doesn't live or die? Four months or little more than four months, he was lying down there in the hospital corridor. Somebody was throwing some scraps at him and he did not know. Every day he thought he will die today, but he would recover the next day morning. Again he thinks he will die. It went on like this. After four months, slowly he recovered. But in the meantime, something fantastic happened to him. Everything just blew. Every day he thought, today is the last day. And then he opened up, shining, blissful human being. Again, back to vegetable selling. Wife gone, children gone, everything gone. Above all, he is gone. <laughs> just staying in contact with mortality for four months did this to him. This is important, you must stay in touch with the mortal nature of who you are. This looks like a bizarre thing, oh, why is he talking about death, we want to live? What you don't understand is, I can say right now that you're living or I can also say you're dying, you're actually dying, one day the process will be complete. Yes or no? Hello? They're just two words for the same thing, isn't it? Right now we are dying slowly, one day it will be complete. Today it's on, is it on or no? Today the death is on or no? It is on. So what you call as life and what you call as death are not two separate things. It is one thing happening. <clears throat> if you become conscious of this, all the tremendous possibilities of being alive will become yours. That was great. great. Fantastic. Yeah. In Sadhguru's book, Death, can't wait to read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So that story of, yeah, that, that guy in the vegetable market and his story. 
Um, yeah, it reminded me of another video of Satguru's where he says, every night when you go to bed, you must die completely. Oh. <laughs> Remember that one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and it just puts everything into perspective where you live fully during the day and then you, you know, you surrender everything, all your judgments and positionalities and opinions, you know, and then you empty yourself of all these concepts and then you sleep peacefully, right? So you're, yeah, becoming conscious of, you know, death is part of life and we're all mm -hmm. headed there eventually. So then, you know, so what are we going to do in the meantime, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because you can think of the the life journey as an unfoldment towards, you know, in our younger years, we want success uh, and fame and prosperity and abundance. And it's like an uphill climb. But then the more we accumulate, it's almost like we're not owning that stuff. It becomes like it's it owns mm -hmm. us. And then we got bills and debt and stress and worry and anxiety because we have all this stuff that we need to protect. And, mm -hmm. you know, eventually, you know, that peak is going to turn it's going to start going down into a valley and death approaches. So, uh, yeah, just to be aware of that and then truly use this lifetime and, you know, contemplate, okay, what's important, right? You know, what is it that lives on, you know, after the death of the body? And then seek to know that, um, you know, realize that and elevate that and become that, right? The true essence, you know, the bliss body. Um, so whatever word used to label the innermost self, you know, that's what it's all about, right? Because, yeah, this collection of aggregates, it's going to be dust someday. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I can't hurt to do uh, meditations on death, mm. that the time is uncertain and that you're definitely going to die. And also we used to do some... Um, uh, meditations about the death process mm, wait, in uh, the, uh, during the November course, the Lam Rim. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's very fascinating, very good. Um, mm -hmm. Makes you quite focused. Also, what I like about this video is, you know, he sees a realized being mm. or enlightened being, as he says, in a vegetable market. And he recognizes him, right? So, and um, you know, a master recognizes a master, mm -hmm. and we are so fast in um, labeling and judging everything that we see um, from our level of consciousness, from our perception, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we have to realize that we are not realized masters, so we actually don't recognize masters, really. We can feel some energy from some people, like Sadhguru, mm -hmm. but when you walk on the streets, you know, when there is a beggar, you don't know how realized that beggar is mm -hmm. um, at all. That's, yeah, one thing I we learned in Tibetan Buddhism very early on, that you don't know who is a Buddha, you don't know who is a Bodhisattva, maybe helping you on the path, maybe the madman you meet in the shop that yells at you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all very abstract, but it's very beautiful because then, you you know, you turn within and then you mm -hmm. treat everyone you meet with kindness and respect because it is an extension of yourself and ultimately it's all happening in your mind. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Truly, we don't know who's enlightened out there, right? And then that's just it, is that, you know, not every enlightened being has the karmic destiny to become a great mm -hmm. teacher. A lot of them just live their daily <laughs> lives. Like, what's that saying in Buddhism? You know, before enlightenment, mm -hmm. chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, yeah. right? So not everybody is becoming teachers. So, so on the spiritual journey, like, as... As the world eventually, you know, if its destiny is to be to, to become that and there's a bunch more enlightened beings popping up, uh, <laughs> the true seekers and those letting go and practicing, um, yeah, not all of them are going to become teachers, right? So as spiritual beings, we need to, you know, recognize other spiritual beings, um, you know, no matter what their teacher yeah. was, what their path was, what religion even, you know, Enlightened beings can come up through traditional religions. Uh, it's entirely possible. And it's, you know, that's the whole purpose of life, to realize who we truly are, mm -hmm. 
um, and understand our oneness and wholeness and harmony and peace and unity and love and compassion. So, yeah, so let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Awaken. Yeah. Hmm. Leave some vegetables in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you made it this far, leave some vegetables down in the comment section. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video as much as we did, please hit that like button. Remember to subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. Um, let us know what you think also down in the comments. And remember, raise yourself. And raise the world. Thank you so much, everyone. And a very special thank you to all our members. We love you. Peace.